Hi, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Thursday episode, got lots of fun stuff to talk about, got a really cool project that I just finished up on an Escalade that I'm gonna show you guys as the feature part of this episode. And then with all Thursday episodes, we've got an update on what's going on in the market with General Motors. There's a lot of product right now that we are seeing um, a, a shift of, I'm not gonna call it a windfall right now, but we've got a gust fall of, of stuff as of right now. Um, I've got to you know, knock on wood the hope that this continues and that gust turns into a windfall. Um, but uh, good news is coming. I, I'm seeing my consensus start to increase in the amount of units that I'm able to place. And I'm also seeing a decrease in the amount of constraints that we have. So a really great episode coming your way, guys. Stay tuned. <music> All right, so uh, we're gonna start right off with the meat and potatoes and getting you guys the information related to uh, constraints, the consensus of what we've got when they're gonna be built, and then also just some allotment at my specific dealership and what we were getting. And that gives you guys a little bit of a, an idea of what everyone's getting, because uh, you know it's pretty consistent across the board with what um, you know is available, is gonna be passed out and awarded to each individual dealership, kind of in a same, scale across the country. Um, the first thing that I wanna talk about is the consensus, and that is telling us when things are gonna get built. So if you are getting a phone call from your dealer and they're saying, congratulations, you're getting your order built, uh, this is gonna tell you when it's gonna get built. Not a lot of people um, at the dealership level um, access this kind of information on a regular basis, and it always is changing. So for you guys right now, if you're gonna get a Corvette allotment, for example, you're gonna be seeing it get built in the 11th of April. So the second week of April is when all the Corvette orders that are being placed today are gonna to be uh, built for. Other couple of important ones to note is the XT5 and XT6. Those are gonna be for the March the 14th. So about a month from now when uh, they're getting their, um, I, I guess five weeks from now, you would be getting your, your um, XT5 or XT6 built. And then for our full size SUVs, the Escalade, the Tahoe and the Yukon, they're also being built on the 14th of March. So five weeks after the time that you get the call this week um, that your bit order is getting built, that's when you're gonna see it. And this is also really important to note because it gives us some time frame on how much time we have left to order stuff for this model year. The 22 model year for the most part is gonna see its final consensus and builds being done in May. So we still have, if they're building things and ordering them right now in the second week of March, um, a good status. And then for the Corvettes, it's, it's a little bit further back. They're, they're building things for an April right now. So this is really kind of aligning with my, my theory that GM is going to be um, waiting to give the Eastern board, Eastern seaboard and the Northern states and, and the Canadian provinces uh, allotment for Corvettes later on in the model year because then if they're getting built in April it's still going to be a little bit of crummy out but we're starting to see some of that uh, come in now. I have two Corvettes that I can place next week um, and I'm assuming that those, I'm itchy nose, sorry guys, I'm assuming that those will be um, built in the latter part of April then which would make sense for, for when you're going to start to see things come up because you know, the end of April, beginning of March is really when you're starting to see the roads start to clear up a bit. They're still going to be covered in sand and stuff like that and all the gravel and, and, and salt from, from the winter. But that's usually when you're seeing a turn for the better in terms of the conditions on the road. So interesting stuff to note in terms of what is getting built. Some kooky ones, just so uh, you guys are on the same page about everything. I don't want to be neglecting, um, you know, some of the other things. If you're getting a Traverse, or a blazer, those are gonna be for the 21st of March. Um, if you're looking at Colorado's out of the Wentzville plant or the Canyons, that's also the 14th of March. HD trucks, March 21st, so the third week of March is when you're gonna see your orders get built for those. And then for the new generation style uh, pickup trucks, you're gonna see those being built on the 28th, so the last week of March for the new gen pickup trucks that are coming out. So interesting stuff there. Um, I did get a decent spread. I didn't get any Corvettes this week, but we got some Escalades. I have about five, I think five or six Escalades that I'm going to get to place next week, which is really awesome. Um, in terms of constraints, the sunroof constraint is really the biggest one that we're seeing an issue with right now on the full-size SUVs. I have been doing um, some correspondence with the Arlington plant, 
And it seems to me like there are a lot of things that are running out right now on the um, Tahoe, Yukon and Escalade. They're, they're running into a lot of different um, shutdowns and the shifts having to end early. And they're even unfortunately having um, some that are not getting produced in time. So they're a little backed up right now at the Arlington plant, which is unfortunate. Um, but just to give you a heads up, you may see uh, some delays on that in the future. Um, from Corvettes, I haven't heard anything and I guess no news is good news. We did have our one Corvette go out. Um, I wasn't there to document the, the final delivery of it. I apologize guys, so there won't be a delivery component of the Rapid Blue C8 that we had come in. I'm sorry about that, it, it already shipped out and it wasn't my, uh, my, um, my deal, so that's one of the reasons why I wasn't there for the delivery component. Um, I did a lot of really cool things with Escalades this week and I had one project in particular that shined out as it was something that was off the menu even for me and uh, it was really fun to be able to put it together and, and it was a really great uh, product at the end of it after everything was done and it really inspired me again to just you know reach out and see if there's anybody else that is, is looking at doing some fun projects because um, just because I haven't done it before doesn't mean that we can't have fun trying to learn how to do it. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that I bring to the table is I'm gonna try out different processes and, and see if things work out instead of just saying it's not possible. And that's a really hard thing to find at a dealership level because there's a lot of cost and time that's involved with trying to try these things out, um, you know, at, at any level of, of um, upgrade, you know, whether it be just a, a thing like a wheel or me even calling the manufacturer to find out who makes the exhausts. Uh, for these exhaust upgrades. So I have been doing some research in that and I am very happy to report that Borla is the manufacturer for the exhaust systems that I've been putting on these Escalade Tahoes and Yukons. I'm also excited to report that I do have confirmation that my um, future Cars and Crosby project is gonna be scheduled to be built next week. So you will see my new project um, within about a month after it gets here. Uh, that's usually the shipping time frame on it. I don't know if I've told you guys what it is or not. I'm gonna stop talking about what it is until it arrives, um, but I'm pumped. I'm very excited to see what this happens. So let's go out and take a look at some cool builds that I had go through uh, this week. All right, guys, allow me to introduce you to the new HMS Cars and Crosby. I've got a Duramax on the front end now, Denali HD with some really awesome upgraded wheels. I call these the honeycombs. Um, 941 foot-pounds of torque, so double the foot-pound torque that I had in my Escalade. And then we've got this bad girl here, bad boy, bad girl, who knows? But uh, look at this, it's got, it's just, I could live in here. It's got cabinets, it's got, it's got lighting and fan systems in here. This is just, this is unreal. So I'm gonna be able to take out that fender and uh, open it up from the side so that I don't have to Dale Earnhardt into the, uh, uh, out of the Corvettes when I'm getting in and out of them. It's especially going to help out with the coupes so that I can open the doors up. But it's, uh, it's a little bit longer than the old one, but it's got, it's got some real fancy features like an electronic, um, whatever the heck these things are, but I can move this up and down with the electronics here. I'm just so excited about being able to take this out on its first voyage tomorrow. I'm picking up a 21 C8 in Sebring Orange hardtop convertible that will be going on the lot. So that's your first sneak peek. I'm gonna lock this up, get it ready for tomorrow, and uh, pick up a Sebring Orange Corvette that you'll see on the channel in a later episode. All right, guys, if you want a reason on why I do Boston's, look no further. That is wild. We take apart the other set, and it's cracked as well. This is, I've never even seen it. I don't know where the customer got these. These are some aftermarket company that I've never heard of, but um, I bet you they weren't cheap, or if they were, there's a reason why. I have never seen a failure that crazy. Imagine if your kids were in that and you're going down the highway and you had a double failure like that. That is wild. Holy moly. Got the muffler going in on the new exhaust system here. Check it out, guys. Got some resonators. You see the new calipers on the back there. And got it undercoated. So you can see all the back rear suspension has been covered in our undercoating that we have on here. Wow, look at all the computers in the back end here. How cool is that? This is actually the lock and the mechanism for putting on your spare tire, which is down there. Bravo. 
All right, guys, feast your eyes on awesome Escalade delivery number one. This here is an ESV Platinum in the sport trim. And we've done a couple of things to this to get it ready for its awesome voyage down south. I'm very jealous of this Escalade because it's going to be going down to Florida. And this is the Snowbird Special, or at least what we're going to call the Snowbird Special as of now. There's a lot of things on here that are going to get this ready for a voyage down south and uh, come back to Canada, obviously, in the summer. And uh, I'm excited to show you all the things that we have on it. So it's a sport, meaning that all the accents are done in black. We will be getting the monochromatic logos on here eventually, but we sold out and I'm just waiting for them to come back. They're very hard to find right now. We got a beautiful set of Vossens. These are in a 22 inch with the original tires on here because it's going back down south. So we don't need winters, lucky them. We've also got the Vossen lug nuts. These again are a 14 and a half by one and a half and uh, they're in a forged aluminum. This is gloss black for the finish and it's a 22 because this is a lady driving it and she didn't want to have a very nice big set on here. So I respect that. The fact that she went to just a Vossen in the 22 was cost effective because it meant that she could use her original tires. And then she has her wheels to hand back in when she's going to trade this in eventually. So ESV, long wheelbase, extended suspension vehicle. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's something like that. We've got roof rack rails on there for added storage because they have a bunch of kids and it's a platinum. Now with it being going in the Florida sun, they were able to have a little bit more fun on the inside with doing that whisper beige. We protected everything like I mentioned in a previous episode where my strongest suggestion if you're gonna do the whisper beige platinum is to get the interior protection because all this suede, this linen over here in the knee area especially, is something that you wanna protect. And if you got kids, luckily they're a little bit older, but this is important to note about the protection. How cool is that when you get your Cadillac? All the stuff all lined up here, ready to go for delivery. In the second row, we've got the media system to keep the kids happy. Keep in mind, guys, you can have a full Google Chromecast system for television on here. You can put your Xbox on here. There's a Wi-Fi and modem. So it's very easy to be able to set up gaming systems on here and then also to change where the sound is going so you can have some fun up in the front with the AKG sound system. And the kids in the back here can use these wireless headsets inside of this box and have some fun in the back. I'll just unwrap one of them here to show you guys what they look like. How cool is this? Remember that ASMR channel we were gonna talk about with taking all this stuff off? There's your first one, there's your second one, and we'll open up the tailgate to get you a hat trick of fun things to take off. Where is it? There it is, number three <laughs> and number four. Okay, in the back here, a new accessory that we haven't showed on the channel. This is a cargo utility net for when you go um, with your your watermelons that are in here. Now you got your, your jars of tomato sauce and stuff to go in here, because as you can see with this, especially being an ESV, you can gain a lot of momentum with some items back here. So we want to make sure that we get a cargo net and it's embossed with a nice, beautiful Cadillac logo on this leather case on here. You got storage underneath here as well. But for those Roundup Tooth items that you wanted to, you know, carry around, that's going to be your best friend. And then when you're going into a fancy place and you want to cover up all the stuff that you bought because you're going to the next place, you got that as well. How cool is this in terms of utility and cargo management in the back of the ESV? So we'll close this back up. I could have kicked underneath there. You'll see that the lights flash to let you know. If I did have a kid's hand or something like that get in there, it would stop and then open back up. So have no fear about that. We've got these roof rack rails, which you can see here have little keys on there so that you can adjust where they go. And um, what else do we need to talk about with this ESV? I think we've covered everything so far. This is a platinum. I haven't had a platinum in a while, guys. So it's got the retractable running boards. We even have a setting on here to make it so that it kneels down when you get into it, about two inches. It goes up and down with the air ride suspension. And then again, because it's a snowbird vehicle, how cool would it be to drive without touching your hands on the steering wheel for the most part? This here is the Super Cruise system. And there is the uh, facial recognition component of it. I'm just gonna show you guys, because I don't think I've ever done this, how you activate the Super Cruise. So what you're gonna do is, first off, let's close this door. What you're gonna do is you're gonna press this button right here, which is gonna activate your cruise control and you'll see right here there's a button or a, an indication of your speed 
one light press is one kilometer an hour and then firmly is five kilometers an hour for increasing or decreasing the speed. And then once you have the cruise control on and you've set up your parameters of how fast you wanna go, you have this button down here, which you'll then press. And as because we're not on a major highway right now, you'll see it doesn't say that, but this will flash green and then you're good to go. You even have settings on here with the new version of the Super Cruise that allow you to be able to make lane changes either automatically or with your command. So you're gonna go to Super Cruise lane change and you're gonna have the automatic version where it will change the lanes for you all on your own. It's pretty wild to see the car and it'll come up with a message here and saying, looking for an available space to change lanes. You'll see in your blind spot that there's no one coming and then it will change lanes. It'll even put on your turn indicator for you. It's pretty wild. Or you can do this one where you have to activate the turn by activating your turn indicator. So it's pretty cool that we already have the ability for this thing to decide that somebody in front of you is being a slow poke and that the Escalade is gonna take the initiative to get you around there in a safe manner all on its own. That is wild. So on a road trip with having augmented reality navigation in a fully autonomous driving system where your hands are not having to be on the steering wheel, that's a big point, uh, thing to note because the Teslas and a, a couple of other companies, they make you have your hands on the wheels. Us, we don't make you do that because we have the same thing that all these fancy phones have, which is an infrared way of being able to make sure that you're paying attention. You get three strikes, there's three. And then after that, it will cancel out and it won't reactivate until you turn over to a, a rest stop or something, turn off the vehicle and then turn it back on. And that's there for your own safety. So if you're getting multiple strikes, maybe you're doing something wrong and can consult your salesperson and make sure that you're, um, you're doing it properly. You can't be watching a video or doing something or looking over at the passenger and talking for an hour. You gotta be still looking at where you're going. And the Cadillac is gonna know that through the facial recognition system right here. So very cool vehicle to go down south with. We're very jealous of the ability uh, for them to be able to just take the whole gang in a long wheelbase luxury SUV that drives itself, has a beautiful ride and a nice set of shoes to go with it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. All right, last but definitely not least, it's part two of Finch Cadillac's Cars and Crosby's awesome Escalade delivery day. I can't even say it with a straight face, it sounds so goofy. But I hope you guys can appreciate it. These are both awesome, amazing builds and I'm gonna have a lot of fun going over this one in particular because this is where I think uh, I have my most fun is when somebody comes in with a ton of enthusiasm and energy and wants to do something that's not a set item. It's not something that even Cars and Crosby and Finch Cadillac have done and I'm ready for the challenge. And this is a really great example of coming to, with an idea and putting it to paper, getting it built, and then kind of working as you go to make it perfect. There's a lot of things on this specific Escalade that I want to unpack. And um, well, I guess let's just get right into it. This here is a premium luxury platinum short wheelbase Escalade. He was a traditionalist. He wanted a more of a traditional Escalade appeal. And what we've done with that is chosen the premium luxury trim that comes with this beautiful chrome aluminum here. The C pillar has got to be my favorite area for that in particular. And then on the wheels here, these are your standard Escalade wheels. Now we were looking at a set of Vossens to start off with, but it's very difficult in this day and age to find a decent set of chrome wheels. Hence, if you saw that little segment I did in between about the set of aftermarket wheels that somebody put on their Escalade, didn't end out too well for them. Now this set that comes with the standard premium luxury platinum is a decent wheel. It, you know, it has a lot of meat on here. We try to reduce that as much as we can with the Vossens, but in terms of the luster, this is a polished aluminum and it goes very well with the same finish that you have on the Escalade. And that was one of my main concerns that I was gonna have with this specific build is trying to keep the luster of these wheels to match the trim pieces on here. We did look into a company that I've been using for a while called Alloy Wheel Specialist in doing something called a vibratory polish where they put it, the wheel into a bin with a bunch of little ball bearings and stuff and they, they basically leave it in there for about three days until they can polish it down and get it all shiny. And that was an option that we were gonna consider if we did go the Vossen route, but we decided that at the end of the day to just keep these wheels on here and then to get a separate set of Vossens at a later date that we can have some fun with and, and do a 24. But for the time being, we're gonna leave these ones on here because it does really do a good job at matching the luster on everything else. 
Now, we were not able to get the Radiance package. It wasn't available when we ordered the vehicle, but I was fortunate enough to be able to order the Galvano mesh grill that comes from the Radiance package and install it separately. The second component to the Radiance package would have been the chrome aluminum wheels, but they are officially donezo in terms of being able to get them for a very long time. So that's another reason why we had these. No offense to these wheels. They're not, they're not the number one choice, but they're gonna get the job done in getting the style and look until we can get a nice set of Austins that we can do that vibratory polish to down the road. Now, in terms of performance, this gentleman wanted to have some fun with it. I don't know if it was the episode that we did on the Escalade V that started it off, but this seems to be a, a, a popular trend because I've had three different people that have agreed to do the same package on their inbound Escalade. So we've got on here, sorry for the wind guys, we've got on here a set of nice six piston Brembos. And then on the back here, you've got your nice little rear brakes that are done in the red as well. And then I've also got the exhaust on here as well. And that exhaust is from Borla, I found out. I did some research for you guys. It is a Borla exhaust. They don't openly sell it um, outside of the parts departments for Cadillac. So if you're looking at getting this done to your Tahoe or something like that, you're gonna have to go to a GM dealer. You, should, you can't even purchase it from the Borla website. It's T304 stainless, which is the highest grade that you can get for an exhaust system. And uh, you're gonna see some performance gains that are in and around the, the dozen range it depends on where you are in elevation in colorado compared to florida you're going to get different performance just based on how much air is in the air oxygen is in the air so if you're 8,000 feet up in colorado or something like that you're not going to have the same kind of performance as if you were around sea level in florida or something like that i keep thinking about florida from that last escalade delivery and how jealous that car is in going down there um so you know in terms of performance upgrades there's a 32 percent reduction in the in the uh the I'm not even going to try to uh, go into more details unless I have a, a cheat sheet with me, but there's, there's some performance upgrades and I'll promise you, I will get the solid facts on that. And I'll even probably feature it when I get it on my vehicle, the whole meat and potatoes related to this specific exhaust. Now we've also got the monochromatic logos on here. We want to keep this being a clean, sleek look, especially with it being black. And the easiest way to do that is by, by taking off that maroon, and that gold that comes from the regular logo and it also goes with the c-pillar emblems that we have on here now on the inside we've got jet black and it's a platinum so you've got some beautiful uh stitching that's done on here and i always like the stitching because it reminds me of the emblem with the different little squares and and rectangles and how these are kind of in the same format it's a really cool cube you've got your akg 36 speaker sound system that's inside of here which is just absolutely bar none one of the coolest things about this vehicle beautiful Cadillac crest in the same monochromatic finish we're keeping with that theme and then we've got one more that's right over here perfect timing there's a train that's about to come in so we're going to hop on the inside and I'm going to show you some more of the features inside of here if you guys um, are are interested in trying to do a build this is really the 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 ultimate experience for both of us i'm really a, a fan of trying to be able to help out with making your dreams come true in your automotive experience and this has really been one of my favorite experiences to date um, with a non-corvette customer and having the same level of enthusiasm and passion that um, we both kind of feed off of you know there was there's an easy way of being able to, to um, get an escalate order and that's just to click the boxes and to expect that um, you know everything's going to be there and if it isn't then so be it i guess we'll just not get it or you can take my kind of attitude and try to find a way around that constraint and obstacle and getting it as close to what the customer dreamed about in his mind when he came to me as possible and that to me is a win all the way around you know i'm going to be able to help out and and making a path for somebody else that's wanting to replicate this build and it means that this customer is going to get what he envisioned instead of being told no and um, I guess it all sounds like common sense, but it's a lot harder than it sounds in this day and age, especially when you're dealing with a vehicle that uh, hasn't been out for a long time. There's a lot of these parts that have never been done. And me, myself, I haven't even done some of these things. So as we get more experienced with this kind of stuff 
Um, it makes the process a lot easier. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I do this channel is to be able to help people out and and not and kind of taking down some of the barriers that might be involved with ordering your vehicle the way you want. You know, in life, it's not always fun to be able to make us to have to make a sacrifice in order to get something done. And I don't want to have to do that, especially if you're paying for an Escalade. This is the top line flagship vehicle that Cadillac offers. And we want to provide you guys with a service that goes with that. So if you're wanting to do something and you're a little apprehensive about, you know, maybe seeing if that can be done, reach out to me. You know, just because your dealership said no doesn't mean that I'm going to say no. And I really like these types of situations because it shows you what I'm made of. And it also makes it so that you can maybe not have your dreams get stifled. So I hope you guys can appreciate that. This one as well has the Super Cruise, which I'm really a big fan of. I just drove to Kingston and on the entire way, um, I was able to use Super Cruise, which is about a 400 kilometer trip. And to think that, you know, you're doing that kind of trip uh, there and back in one day, that's eight or nine hours of driving, especially when you're going through Toronto, which is a major metropolitan area. And, um, you know, again, I'm not trying to sound cliche just because I'm a Cadillac salesperson, but that trip goes a lot easier when you have OLED display screens that are at 60 frames per second that help out in making it so that your eyes are not distressed. As you see this bus go by and these flags that are going in the air, you can see that the frame rate is the exact same uh, frame rate that your eyes pick up on, which means there's not a lot of distress when your eyes are having to transition from out in the real world down to the virtual screen display here. So that transition can play a, a little bit of a distress on your eyes over time, especially on a long road trip. And it was really nice to have that. And then also this uh, Super Cruise, it really helps out as well with taking a little bit of that, that load off of you when you're driving the vehicle and making it so that you can keep your energy and your mind at a, at a higher level than it normally would be at. And that to me is surreal to think that you have an Escalade that will drive itself and help you out and making sure that when you get to your destination, you're a little bit more revitalized than you would have been on a normal trip. Get used to it, guys. This is the future and we're coming in fast. So if you guys are interested in something along these lines, reach out to me. I would be absolutely honored to be able to help you out. Keep in mind, you have to be in Canada because I can't sell anywhere outside of the world. But um, for the most part, I can do everything in the States. And after it's 12,000 kilometers old and, uh, and has uh, six months on it, I can export these things as well. So if you're interested, I'm going to be getting rid of my Escalade soon. So if you're interested in picking up my uh, Cars and Crosby rig, uh, reach out to me as well because that will be very soon uh, listed as I have my next project and adventure that's coming up. I'm working Crosby from Finch Cadillac. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for more awesome content and happy motoring.